And I wonder if you even pay these guys that much. I always wondered. Because I had a, a, a bunch of co companies come to me. I want to build this type of local search feature. Um, let's say it's like COVID related or whatever it might be. I'm like, Google's going to wipe you off the pl planet in five seconds once they see this feature. Right. It doesn't take much. They know who's in the stores, when they are. They can just ask, where were their masks being worn in the store? You know, they pop up those things all the time when you go to a certain location. Uh, so it's very interesting, which I think brings us into a nice segue of what works. What are the, I know you're a big tactics guy. What works? We're super lucky to have this video sponsored by Zoic. Please watch their ad and support them. Using their AI and all of the different tools that they have, we're actually able to increase our revenues three, four, and five times. We're not only weathering the storm, but we're actually growing right now. So what, what works and what doesn't work? You know, in SEO, there's this tendency, once something works in the past, it becomes codified almost in a religious fashion. And so people keep doing it, whether they don't bother testing it. So in the arena of what doesn't work is NAP consistency. It's no longer as, as when Google moved to the knowledge graph yeah. and they started keeping a, a fixed record of a business in the knowledge graph as an entity, the need for NAP consistency declined dramatically. Can you explain what NAP consistency so, means? Uh, name, address, and phone number. It was essentially thought early in the 2008, 2012, before knowledge graph, if you had inconsistencies across the greater internet, Google might like you had a phone number at one place that was wrong and a address that was slightly inconsistent, Google would reconstitute your listing through web search every six weeks. So every six weeks there was a Google dance and local, right. and you could end up with a monster listing with your competitor's website or your competitor's phone number. Right. And so the only way to deal with that was nap consistency. So David Mim and I wrote extensively about this at the time, and it became dogma. Well, since 2012, NAP consistency is no longer uh, critical to your success. This is an example of things that change. Things that are critical, obviously having a great website with great content, good internal linking, good site structure, duh, getting inbound links to that website. Those are things you can control and that still work in local. Reviews are helpful both for direct ranking, but also because Google uses review, use reviews to understand relevance and the reach of your business. So if somebody's writing about uh, a particular thing you do, you're more likely to show on those topics. So it's not just about rank, it's about reach, but also they work for conversion optimization, right? So if somebody comes, sees you on Google, they may even stop right at Google, pick up the phone right there. Reviews are one of the ways to convince users that you're the person they should call. So great website, inbound links, internal linking, reviews, and then the one thing that I think most people don't think about is mentions. So the idea of a citation has taken on the patina of some sort of structured citation at a Yellow Pages or a Yelp. But the original idea of what Google called web references, which David renamed citation, was a mention of your business in the news. And that, without a link. In other words, Google is able to associate yeah information about your business. And you can see this in maps, I don't yeah. know, numerous times, but so good public relations where your business gets mentioned in the local news, that's as good as a link. They were, I think there were times where we were testing showing those mentions and highlighting them in the yes. map results. And they call them web references. They had a site command search right now, we could probably bring it up, but we don't right this second, so I apologize. Yes. So yeah. those are things that, that still work. Cool. Uh, and then the, the issue though, because Google has become such an immersive environment, for consumers, and because consumers stay there to make a decision, anything you can do at Google that makes your brand more appealing can help with conversion. This isn't about rank, it's about conversion optimization. Right. And that includes things like great photos, obviously reviews, but filling in your Q&A, filling in your services and your products, which in the end helps Google steal, more, steal shift more, traffic away from your website to their resources, but which helps consumer make a decision quicker, sooner, faster. So any things that Google that you can control, you should, because they improve your conversions there. So it's, it's, it's a lot more closer to organic SEO these days when it comes to tactics. Links, it's, good content, good website, um, but there's obviously that whole local perspective add, added on top of it, which right. makes, I, I asked a bunch of SEOs, what's harder, local SEO, or just generic web search SEO. 
And I think the consensus has been local SEO. Because well, a lot it more is and it isn't. Like Part of the nice thing about local is is local. So you may have fewer competitors, or you may have, you know, you have a limited range in which it works. And with some of the recent algorithms, that range is dramatically restricted. It might only be three or four miles around your business. Right. So in that sense, it might be easier. But you're not competing at a national level. But in terms of numbers of moving pieces, there's definitely more. Since it's you know, COVID time, we all have our masks. We're not wearing them because we're outside and I think at least six feet away. Um, and we all make sure to get tested right before we came here, right? No. Have you been tested? I haven't been tested yet. I haven't been tested. Uh, my kids were tested because they had- they But had I've school. also, I'm an introvert by nature and- Yeah, I, aren't we all? <laughs> I have not seen very many people over the last six months. Yeah, yeah. My, my children and those I even, I distance from my children. You I wear masks around my children. Yeah. They're the only people I've seen, so. And you. Well, so I appreciate that. <laughs> I'm on the list, the short list. You are on the short list. It's awesome, I appreciate that. So let's talk about any impact. You said, you mentioned here, like maybe is there any impact of COVID on reviews specifically? And that's something that I really personally haven't seen, but you're way in deep in this, so. Because I did, a, I started analyzing large national brands and comparing their pre-COVID reviews to their post-COVID reviews. Uh, several articles that gather up on this topic. And what we found was across the board, there was, if you looked at the 90 days pre and the 90 days post sort of right. period, there was at least a point, you know, a four, like a 4.3 to a 4.2 drop in ratings. And this was consistent, Walmart, Home Depot, Costco. The same quantity of ratings and a drop in ratings or? The drop in ratings. The rating, there may have been even a few more reviews than normal. Clearly employees were stressed, customers were stressed yeah. and it showed up in reviews. Mm -hmm. But what I found was fascinating, it was one company, then I started analyzing mass complaints specifically. Mm -hmm. And I found that mass complaints around the nation, 98, 99% of them were about companies not enforcing mask hygiene rigorously enough or hypocrisy that employees weren't wearing them and right. customers were, or customers were, were, weren't wearing them and employees were. But, and I found that in Home Depot, we had eight times as many mask complaints as as any as Walmart for or people Costco. not wearing a mask. Well, complaining about hygiene in general. Uh -huh. Then I said, okay, well, why is that? Is it demographic? So I started comparing them to a company called Menards, which is a home repair business in the Midwest that stretches from Ohio to Wyoming and sort of Kentucky to Minnesota. And there, it was fascinating because the complaints shifted because they required masking early. Right. Complaints shifted to your, your complaints about being forced to wear a mask. Mm -hmm. And as I analyzed the reviews, I realized that, and then I compared them to Costco, where also required masking early. Costco had many fewer complaints about that issue. And so then the question became why? And in analyzing Menard's reviews, I was able to ascertain that they had implemented several other policies simultaneously, like not allowing parents to bring children in the store. Right. So if you're a parent with kids at home and you go have to go shopping for some faucet, you're gonna leave your four-year-old in the car? Not, people really didn't like that. They were very aggressive in forcing people back out of the store. They didn't have a mask on, like literally pushing people out of the store. And they also, unlike Costco, which gave masks away at, during the education period, Menards was charging for them, which people uh, really hated. Yeah, that's so you can learn, I learned all this by reading their reviews. So not only did they have these politically motivated reviews about the loss of my personal freedoms and how they were communists, there were also these other negative reviews. And so they went from four, two to three, seven in this comparatives. Much bigger loss, much higher. And this will affect them pretty much for a long time. Those will go away, but I guess maybe Google might at one point say, five years from now, should we just ignore that time period? Well, I pointed it out to Google yeah. and many of the, at least the reviews that were political in nature. You're a communist for requiring me to wear a mask. I mean, wearing a business as requiring a customer to wear a mask is the most capitalist thing you can do. It's their private property. They're yeah. setting the rules. And so it's not a, you know, to be called communist because of that seems a little weird to me, but those types of reviews, when I pointed them out to Google, Google actually took them off. Mm -hmm. It still left a massive number. It changed from 3.7 to 3.8, but 
because Google took the political reviews out. It still left a massive number of negative reviews. Many people said they would never go back. So I think that the reviews tell this incredible story about how they did not implement the policy changes with the same thoughtfulness that Costco did, and they paid a price. And so, uh, to me, reviews are so rich in telling that story. I've spent a lot of time studying that. And then I ended up doing a large-scale consumer survey. Would you, you know, if a business strictly enforced masking, would you, are you more likely to spend money with them or less likely? Interestingly, roughly 80% are more likely. Mm -hmm. But there is a percentage who are less likely. Yeah. It was about 20% and 7% we're never gonna do business with them again. So there is some small percentage in this country that are vehemently opposed to maps, but it isn't, it is by no means a majority. In fact, it's a very small minority. Mm -hmm. Interesting. And it's interesting, I've been watching Google change their local policies and add new features and remove features and scale back things all throughout this COVID process. They have focused very heavily on the changing landscape of local through features, right? Curbside delivery, whether you did video, uh, inter, you know, uh, video appointments, presence, yeah. any, uh, whether you did appointments or calendars, all these things surfaced very quickly. I mean, all the ideas that they'd been, that had been percolating around, but that had relevance in a low contact environment, mm -hmm. Google rolled them out very quickly, which demonstrated to me that when they're motivated, they can make massive changes to local very quickly. They also focused on hospitals and spent a great deal of time making right. sure that hospital information was accurate to the extent that they sort of their service level dropped way off for regular yeah. businesses. Um, but it also demonstrated that when they're motivated, they can have a huge impact in local. One, I continually have to ask, why aren't they motivated to deal with listing spam and review spam? There's other priorities, I guess. Other priorities. Pandemics are, is a priority, I guess. Yeah, true, but now <laughs> but when the epidemic ends, will they refocus? Probably not. No, I mean, I mean, if you look at the history, probably not. But, right, um, or they will for a moment, and then they'll forget about they it. Were, so there was a time where no reviews were being posted at all. They That's removed Q&A features. They're like, we just, at the same time, they, these people who are managing all this stuff and reviewing it, probably didn't have the computers set up properly in their homes and stuff like that. They were trying to transition all these employees yeah. to a work from home environment. It was very difficult. They did, they, 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 they accepted reviews, but they weren't publishing them right. during this period. Um, and so, and then it was Recently, about a 90 day period. Yeah, the past few weeks, I believe. And now it's like, uh, what's today? September 3rd. This video will probably be out for a month or so, but they just recently in the past like month or so started pushing them out. Slowly. So, right. There was this gradual rollback where they started accepting new reviews. Right. And then they started pulling the old ones that had been left during that period. And that's how I discovered, when I started looking at these old reviews, I discovered that they'd rolled out review attributes during that period because they started showing up. I went back, looked at the original dates. It was about April 15th when no reviews were showing. I do appreciate, I'm always like tagging you. Is, I'm, cause I'm, is this new, is that? It's hard with local, I track a lot of it. And sometimes I'm like, I don't know. And then I tag you and then you might tag somebody else. And it's just this local community. I love the local SEO community more than, I think I shouldn't really say it publicly, but more than most SEO communities. We've been able to establish a very collegial environment where, where cooperation is the order of the day. And I think there's a broad recognition that local is big enough for all of us mm -hmm. and that through cooperation we can achieve better things. And I think that's a, it's something that local you worked on with David Mim and I and Mary Bowling and something that's near and dear to my heart. I mean, the reality is the other local SEO isn't really your competitor in any significant sense. The, biz the, the world of small business is big enough that we can all find business and the real competitor is probably Google. Yeah, They're all one shared enemy, Google, right? I, yeah, well, I don't like to think of them as a shared enemy, but they certainly are a fierce competitor. For sure. Um, I, I think I, kind of, I mean, the local SEO community now kind of reminds me of the SEO community back like 15 years ago. It was a smaller space. People, I mean, it's very rare to see that now because SEO is just massive. I mean, it's grown significantly and I appreciate everything you guys do to kind of like, every, you welcome everybody into the community. Um, and you, anybody new, anybody old, they all have a place and it's not as, um, how would you say the nice word? Clickish. Not even a cl uh, aggressive. Aggressive. <laughs> People are really aggressive in the, in the SEO community when it comes like, if somebody comes in and asks a question in SEO, it, it could be, especially in the Google forums, it would be like, you're doing everything wrong, we hate you. You know, how could you do that? You don't know what you're talking about. Right. Uh, but with local SEO, you really do a good job 
you know, really being patient with people and explaining things. And the, the tone that's in the forums goes back to the early days of the forum. Many of the people that were there with me, uh, Helmet and Trebles, these are back from 2006, 2007, they've stuck around and they helped create an environment of help and assistance. I mean, these small businesses come in, they're clueless. Yeah. And they, and Google for many years wasn't helping them. Yeah. And so we took it upon ourselves to create an environment in which they could be helped. And the newer people that came in, Joy and Hawkins and Jason and Ben, have all bought into that idea of cooperation, Crystal Tang, of being supportive to both the newbies and the people yeah. there. And it's, it's a much nicer to be collegial than not. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. And it, it's heartbreaking when I get a phone call from somebody saying, I have my business, it's tanked because of this Google Core update or whatever it might be, I'm trying to get help, I can't get any help. And the truth is, Google doesn't put the SEOs in a position to help, right? especially around these core updates. Um, and you feel for them, there's not much you could do to tell them, you know, rip down your site and rebuild it from scratch. It's just not much you could do there. Um, and I, I don't know if, who's to blame per se for how the SEO general community has gone versus the local SEO community. I guess I could be one to blame. I was back in 2002, 2003 doing this. Um, but I'll blame everything on Danny Sullivan because he sold out and went to Google. <laughs> That's right. uh, well, you know, early on, I realized that there were these divisions in 2000, 2001, 2002, and I realized that it was important that I align myself with people of good intention early. So, you know, I read you, but I also became friends with Greg Sterling and Bill Slavsky. These were people that struck me as people of integrity, and I yeah. realized that the only thing that was more important to me than local was my reputation. Yes. And, and only by being collegial and sharing could one right. sort of And to be fair, I think 99% of everybody at SEO local, local and larger SEO community are very amazing to each other, good people. There's always the few that stand out, and the few that stand out are always the loudest, if you kind of seen that over the years. But in any event, um, it's been a long interview. I'll probably break this up into a few videos, hopefully. And if you could just tell people on this video, look into your camera over there and tell people how they can learn more about you, which websites you write at, how they can follow you on Twitter or whatever. Sure, Google so Plus. my Twitter is mblumenthal. <laughs> I publish a lot there. I would prefer, if you're gonna ask me a question, to send me an email. I'm probably best at mike at blumenthal's.com or mike at gatherup.com. Send me an email, I'd be glad to respond. I write actively at Gather Up about reviews. I write at Blumenthal's.com forward slash blog about local in general. I write at localu.org, uh, which Joy Hawkins bought and is running very well, but uh, things that are happening on Google and Google My Business. So I'm writing at all of those places. And uh, if you've got a problem or a question, I'm available to answer it. And he will. He responds fast. He answers pretty much everybody who pings them on social media and on the forums. Mm -hmm. So I appreciate everything you're doing. You've been doing it for almost 20 years now. So probably more than 20 years. So. Yeah, uh, that's right. I've been doing SEO work for 20 years and local for 17, 16. 17, right. Like that. It's amazing. Thank you so much for everything. Well, thanks for driving and making this no, happen. Thank you for coming uh, out here. I appreciate it. Enjoy the beautiful uh, town. We go New York. Yeah, enjoy it. <laughs> thank you. All right. So that was Mike. I made it a really long interview because he's super smart, been in the industry forever very very giving of his time I just am um, honored for him to actually spend that much time driving out I think I'm one of the first people he's seen outside of his family since COVID hit but again I'm super happy that he we were able to get together and, and talk in a safe environment so much knowledge in there so I'm on my way back it's about two hours now about started the video a bit left, later but about two hours and 30 minutes to get back well worth the time invested about six plus hours but definitely well worth it um, this is a man that knows so much about local search local SEO and he has a really really big heart so really happy that I had a chance to talk to him about this any event enjoy the ride back it's actually starting to rain which I didn't expect but perfect timing because rain didn't touch down when we were talking be well be safe speak to you guys soon bye-bye